Right, Mark, big meeting today. Yes, um, I don't know about the track yet. Long straights, very tight corners. Um, so there's a handful of for a tall chat, right, mate? Yeah, I mean, do you find it um, a disadvantage being on the tall side? Yeah, I do, yeah. I wish I could chop a little bit off the end of my legs. Uh, going into the corners, I'm, they're always in the way, especially the uh, left leg. Um, going on to something slightly different, um, uh, you've taken up a new career in kickboxing. <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> Bit of trouble with uh, a certain other rider the other week. Ah, uh, yeah, but uh, never mind. That's you know that's over and done with now. We forget about that. Uh, I managed to miss that one. <laughs> right, um, you had a, a good result in the 350 British final. Um, obviously, you, you hopefully in the future you're going to win that one. Yeah, next year I'm going to really go for it. I was, um, I don't know. I was a little bit upset, but uh, never been in the situation before under a lot of pressure. You know, anybody could have won it on the last race, and you didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> That's right. Uh, obviously, a different kettle of fish today. Um, a lot of top riders in this meeting. Uh, how do you see it going for yourself today? If I can uh, make some good starts and keep the speed up along the straights and uh, just ride the corners nice and hard, I should be in with a shower, I reckon. And um, you've obviously been around the track in practice. Yeah. It looks a bit difficult. Uh, are you finding it difficult? Uh, yeah, the top corner, the first corner is a little bit uh, dodgy. Completely different to the uh, top corner here. Yeah, right, right. right um, have a good day's racing and I hope we meet in the final. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Dane, cheers mate. All right, all right, mate. It's with uh, Rob Fortune. Rob, we don't see you riding in England that much these days. Um, are you looking forward to today's meeting? Yeah, yeah, it's been nice to just be down the road and not have to drive for two days before we get here. Yeah, looking forward to it really. I mean, you, you ride a lot on the continent these days. Um, will you be riding many more meetings in England over the next few years or is it just going to be riding abroad? Um, try and do a few more in this country. Certainly towards the end of this season, we'll do a few more over here. Uh, next season, I don't know. Possibly will be the last season anyway. So then, I don't know. Something else. So yeah, I mean, you're getting a bit long in the tooth these days, aren't you? You're going to take up a new career, are you? Possibly sight cars. Yeah. Um, I think you can go on a bit longer for sight cars. And uh, my knees are starting to give up now. Bad. So I'm um, sight cars. Knees going to last a bit longer, so might might have a go at that. Well, which form of sidecars would you prefer? 500s, because I've got the equipment. <laughs> it's uh, for me, it wouldn't be too expensive to set up, and um, I could still possibly, if I was good enough, I could still get abroad. Right, I mean, going on to today, today's today's meeting, and um, there's a lot of top riders here today. How do you see it going for yourself? Don't know. It's so um, 
alien to what I'm used to now, with a broad coming in flat out and and just sort of keeping your feet up really. And it's so English that um, I'm going to try to try and make some starts and stick to the line and see how it goes. Now you've been out in practice, uh, asked a, uh, another rider this question, how are you finding the track? Rough and very tight, um, quite grippy. As I say, if I can get out some, make some starts and stick to the line and use my head, it might, might be alright. And what kind of position would you be happy with today? Um, first. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah. Right, um, right, have a good day's racing and I hope to see you soon. Cheers, Tony. In the pits with uh, Steve Bishop. Steve, uh, a new haircut today. Yeah, we're hoping for a change of fortune. Yeah, um, I mean, I saw you out on the track. I, I followed you around, and you seem to be struggling as much as me today. I certainly am, yeah. Um, last corner went too bad, but up to then, I don't know what I was doing. Shouldn't have had my haircut. <laughs> right, um, a lot of top riders here today. Um, how do you, you see it going? Um, not too bad. I, I, I think everybody's in, having the same problem with the track, so it should make for a bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, cool crashing fun. No, uh, last time I spoke to you on interview, it was at the Masters, and it really went well there for you. You're obviously preparing for that second round. Uh, yes, I'm um, trying to mentally get myself right, build myself up for it. You know, well, early, that, early nights. I was just saying, I mean, that's myself. the first um, serious thing you've said. So obviously, the Masters makes you a bit more of a serious rider. Yeah, hopefully my hair will grow again by then. Yeah. You lost all your strength. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd have a Tony Aitken cut. Yeah, it doesn't work. I'm yeah. thinking of growing mine long. Yeah. Right, um, where are you going to come today then? I want a bold prediction. Um, first. Is that bold enough? Right. Are we going to have money on it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lose my family. <laughs> right, okay, have a good day's racing. Well, I'll see thing. you soon, mate. Well, okay. Well, Okay, right, with Gary Jackson, last time I spoke to you was just before the Masters, you must be pleased with that result. Yeah, very pleased indeed. Um, I said actually at that interview that if I was going to set a track out, that's like just how I'd set it out, and uh, it worked out very well for us. Pity about the weather, but, uh, you know, same for everybody I suppose. It's lucky that they got the Masters heats through, so not too disappointed with that really, but yeah, pleased with the, uh, with the, with the heats, yeah. Right, um, obviously second place is good and you know there's a good chance that you can pull it all back in the second round and catch Roger up. Yeah, uh, 42 points at the second round, so yeah, it's all to play for. Three points off Roger and we're three points clear from third, so we're in with a shout. Yeah. W would you be happy to come second or is it all about winning that British Masters title? Yeah, well, I, I want to win. Um, I'm not going to you know, give up on first place. So, I mean, obviously, if I can't have first, then, yeah, I want second, but uh, I'm going to try for first. Now, you, you've been around quite a few years now, and, and you've, you've kept the same passenger, Kevin Williams, for a long time. Is that important to have a good passenger? Very important. The passenger is, is underrated, actually, to his participation. And Kevin's a good passenger, yes, he is, and he's made all the difference for me. He's been with me, uh, this is third year, actually, and it's only in that, that since I've had Kevin that I've been able to get near the top and I put it all down to Kevin really so yeah he's made a hell of a difference. Right we'll get on to today's meeting I've asked the solo boys about the track how are you finding it out there? Um, it's very grippy I think the solos are saying the same are they? Very grippy um, I hope they can keep uh, a handle on the dust but uh, we'll have to see about that one I hope we don't water it too much because then again that spoils the racing as well so it's difficult to get a balance between the dust and the water and it, it, a lot of the solo boys are saying it's very tight out there. How are you finding it on the bends? Yeah, the, the bends do seem tight for the straights. But, you know, as I always say, it's the same for everybody. But, yeah, it's, the, the speed into the corners is uh, really more than what you really need to get round the corner. So it's making it, everybody's coming out wide, so coming out the corners. But it leaves a hole to go into. So <laughs> if there's a gap on the inside, it, there's an advantage to be gained from that. Right, good stuff. Have a good day's racing. I hope to see you up there at the end. Yeah, and good luck to you as well. Thank you very much. Well, Tony, while we have the parade, I have to say you can pick up the 500 and I'll pick up the big chairs and the 250s. Uh, They've got weight drink. <laughs> Thank you. 
having one of those who is that we know him we also know his name we've worked it out now don't worry about it but uh, we get a little confused sometimes so then race one coming out to the line and we're looking to see peter lloyd ian dudley dean garton mark seabright adrian stevens phil ashcroft gary o'hare jason handley mitchell garden and david wright young mitchell progressing all the time father don here looking after him today and uh, if any of that wealth of experience and skill can rub off young mitchell's got a tremendous future here we go then and Dean Garden having a problem with the last time. He's suddenly getting caught there on the line just a little bit. We have a yellow flag for a fallen rider on the right. He's uh, up on the machine. He's got away again. So it's still then uh, David Wright leading this one as they come round towards us. And uh, David Wright pulling away from the opposition. Now. So is David Wright then, really on song today, out there, young Gloucester rider. Not that the best of luck with fitness over the years, but uh, when he's going well, he's good to watch. So then, it's uh, David Wright and his friend. David Wright with the advantage. Look at Peter Lloyd challenging right round the outside. So it's Peter Lloyd going wide, wide round the outside. Who's going to get there? One more lap to go as they cross the finish line. Still David Wright in front. Side by side. David Wright with the tidy inside line. Peter Lloyd moving past the outside. David Wright moving past the outside. David Wright moving past the outside. So then, Peter Lloyd, who's... Uh, Known all about the big time of grass track, being a European grass track finalist. Never had the best of luck in Europe, I have to say, but he did win. Better right in the second place. And a long way back to Adrian Stevens, third. 
So race three on the line with Sean Tacey coming in in place at Paul Fry. So the Ipswich Speedway man with us. And nice to see Wayne Broad who's goes, Andy Sal, Mike Dowling, Steve Bishop. And Tyler. Out in front as they head into that first bound. Colin Owen with the advantage. Mike Dowling drops back to third place. But Colin Earl out in front. Seem to hesitate a little bit off the far bend. That's Andy Sell up into second place. Colin Earl then from Andy Sell. Mike Dowling right now back in fourth place. So, Colin Earl, the Middlesbrough Speedway. Be nice though, Middlesbrough. Machine Andy Sell, these two side by side. Andy Sell and Colin Earl, what a battle going on here. There's Andy Sell with a slim advantage over Colin Earl as they come around the paddock bend once again. And uh, coming all through the ride and Colin Earl's up the inside of it. Colin Earl back in front. Well, come on fellas, let's have some uh, some normal racing lines off this bend. Here we go, side by side. Andy Sell goes down, Andy Sell goes down. So it's Colin Earl then, who's going to head into the last lap on his own. Colin Earl in front. Tony Aitken in the second lap. A collision on the far side, Andy Sell on the ground and one of the other riders collected him, Vince Kinchin I think collected him on the ground. So then they head uh, for the checker flag victory then for uh, Colin Earl number 172 uh, from Middlesbrough. Tony Aitken, the former British 350 champion of the World Raptors Speedway man in second place, in third place, number 34 Steve Bishop. We have a red flag on the bottom corner. I'm not sure exactly when that went out, so we'll wait and uh, the results as follows. In first place, number 172, Colin Earl. In second place, number 10, Tony Atkin. In third place, number 34, Steve Bishop. In fourth place, number 282, Mike Dowling. In fifth place, number 419, David Perry. In sixth place, number 51, Sean Tacey. In 7th place, number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. And in 8th place, number 110, Steve Dorr. And uh, Vince Kinchin crosses the line. Uh, we have Steve Smith. Uh, what can you say about Steve Smith? Uh, he's been there, he's been winning for so many years, and he's still there, he's still winning. And, uh, of course, interestingly, he doesn't uh, go for a Yamaha motor, he uses that uh, V-twin god. Going with him goes Russell Ng. Well, again, Russell a tremendous performer, second in the Masters in 92 and 93. Buying third at the moment, so he's going to be in contention at Tunbridge in a few weeks' time. Tim Bennett goes, Rob Wilson goes, and Terry Phillips. Those are the drivers. This is race four. Mark Edwards, unfortunately a non-starter due to uh, machinery problems. Our first outing for the big chairs. And uh, as I said, Steve Smith, Russell Ng, Tim Bennett, Rob Wilson, they're the drivers. They get away, they break down the backs. We have flags, I think we have a full start. Full start on the uh, far side there. Uh, Vince Kinchin is uh, given ninth place in race three. So 844 in ninth place. So then, they break, and uh, Tim Bennett making a super start. Number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves really going to that first bet now then. What's going to happen here? Steve Smith a little way back, but uh, the battles are wrong. And uh, Tim Bennett in second, Steve Smith in third. And Russell Ng right back in the dust. Good heavens, what's happened to Russell there? So then, across on the far side. Look at that battle for second, third and fourth places. It's Steve Smith in second place. And they're coming round towards us once again. And uh, they're all closing up as Rob Wilson comes towards us. So it's Rob Wilson. And second place, in third place, it's Tim Bennett with Steve Hardy. So then, can Steve Smith and Keith Wall do anything about the leader? Certainly number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles on the steer Yamaha, really flying in this race. And at the moment, Steve Smith doesn't seem to be able to make up that ground. Steve Smith in second place. Back to fourth place behind Terry Phillips, and then Russell behind him. 
So then, looking across to the far side, Ron Wilson still uh, in control. Tony Barnes looks over his shoulder, he's looking anxiously for Steve Smith and Keith Wall. But there are a few metres back, Ron Wilson surely is going to get this one. They head for the checkered flag, Ron Wilson there. Steve Smith and Keith Wall in second place. Who's going to get the battle for third? I made it just Terry Phillips and Chris Byers, but uh, we'll wait for the official verdict on that one. In first place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In second place, number 2, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. In third place, number 52, Terry Phillips and Chris Byers. In fourth place, number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargraves. And in fifth place, number 6, Russell Ng and Paul Uritz. And the winner's time, 1 minute, 28.59. 1 minute, 28.59. Those numbers read 24, 2, 52, 12, and 6. across to the far side, Craig Cheetah making a tremendous start, Clive Reynolds in the chair today, the pair of them uh, really gating well there, and there they come wide, now what's going to happen here is we look up to our left, well then, Craig Cheetah has got a real challenge on his hands, there may only be three outfits out there, but by the way, they're all really going at it, Craig Cheetah lost the lead, gets it back again, and powers down the back straight. And uh, that's uh, we know what's happened there. Mick Cave and Mick Stays a long way back. Craig Cheetah still out in front as they come towards us. And Craig Cheetah battling away for that second spot, working away at it, trying to come through. And uh, right around the outside, we're looking for Gary Jackson to show here because uh, that very quick driver from Cheshire has been going so well this year and uh, we're looking for him to come through in the show but at the moment uh, we've got uh, the just ahead of Craig Cheatham. So it's Gary Jackson then, out in front. Craig Cheatham in a second place. Joe Morgan, he was in third. And uh, Mick Cave with a serious misfire problem but obviously going to circulate and uh, take the chequered flag and therefore get finishers point. So then, to our right, we're looking for number 23, Gary Jackson, Kevin Williams, on the Jackson. And they win. Number one, Craig Cheatham and Dry Reynolds in second place. And that's the way they cross the line. What a good struggle for first, second and third places. Race five, outfit number 23 in the first place, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. In second place, outfit number one, Craig Cheatham, Clive Reynolds. In third place, number 98, Joe Mogg and Joe Smith. And in fourth place, just completing race distance, number five, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. And the winner's time was 1 minute 29.12. 1 minute 29.12. Bling for race six. Nice to see that in Ray Foreman in action. They've been going uh, reasonably well, but of course... Uh, Ray, of course, still suffering a little from that uh, injured shoulder. But... Uh, well, a lot of Midland support for them, I'm sure. Here we go then, they break and head down the back straight, and uh, John Hiscock making a good start. Let's see what's going to happen. No, in fact, he's dropped back a little bit now, and he's sitting in fifth place as they come around towards us, and indeed it looks as though uh, they're very, very tight. Then a right forward, I think. Then a right forward ahead of the window road. So Rod and Chris Winterburn in that second spot from Cole in Lancashire and Leonard Ray Foreman uh, yeah, having quite an exciting exit from that bend but they hung on in there and they're out in front and uh, so it's Len and Ray Foreman then with the advantage as they come round towards us once again. So uh, Len and Ray Foreman in third place as they pass down the Randall in the chair. Paul Randall has been with some good drivers over the years. Ferran. Leonard Ray Foreman, interesting sort of steering uh, action for uh, then for as they come off that uh, far bend. But they're still out there, they're out right in front. Looks almost like the end, it's a bit lighter on the front. Just watch the steering from the 
The results then of race six, the winners, number 149, Lennon Ray Foreman. In the second place, the Winterburns, number 148, that's uh, Rod and Chris. In the third place, outfit number four, Dave Penfold and Paul Randall. In fourth place, outfit number 90, Phil Pittman and Gary Lane. And in fifth place, outfit number 25, Rob Wilson Jr. and Colin Hill. And in sixth place, number 184, John Hiscock and Tony Beminster. And a winning time, 1 minute, 28.17. 1 minute, 28.17. Had a problem in practice and he's blown the motor. Number 39, Shane Baker and Clinton Martin. So, we should have five. We've only got four. So, obviously, Phil Prescott is a non-starter. And as we get off the line, it's Roger Major who shows the front. And Dave Steer up there as well. And as they go into the first turn, it's uh, John Halsey getting tailed off a little bit. But it's Dave Steer leading as they come off the bottom turn by a whisker from Roger Major in second place. Trying up the outside. And John Halsey just getting tailed off a little bit at the moment. But the leading three absolutely together on the top turn. Steer it is then. And here comes Roger Mesa trying to go down the outside. He'll probably go in wide and lock it up and try and come back on the inside. But Dave Steer it is leading still on that bottom turn. And sure enough, Roger tries to come through on the inside. Absolutely classical move. In wide and uh, out tight. So the new leader, number 51, Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham. Dave Steer and Andy Orchard there in second place. In third place, still Ivan Matthews and Pete Jones, and uh, John Halsey and Jason Glennie still not recovered from a poor start, and John really not having the best season. So, Roger Mieser, who goes to the second round of the Masters with a three-point lead, it is out in front. He had a superb meeting on the bridge north three weeks ago. Still the rain, tempered everybody's enthusiasm, of course. Roger Mieser it is, on the bottom turn by some 20 or 30 metres, check it flag at the ready. And Roger Mieser and Shane Lapham, Dave Steer in second place, and Ivor Matthews in third. And trailing in in fourth place on the Yamaha was John Alsey and Jason Glennie. So, so wheel four, number 51, Roger Mieser and Shane Lapham. In second place, number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In third place, number 15, Arthur Matthews and Peter Jones. And in fourth place, number 13, John Halsey and Jason Glennie. The time, 127.23, 127.23, the fastest sidecar race so far. Those numbers again for race 7, 51, 17, 15 and 13. Never to be forgotten, 250 final at Minster League. The champion, of course, once again, for the 11th time, won it back in 1978 at Evesham for the first time, and now champion for the 11th time, number 344, Mark Wadsworth. Against him in this one, we've got 248, Carl Wilkes from Telford, who was fourth in the national championship this year. We've got Mark Rowe, the very, very quick man from Penzance, and uh, from the... Uh, Eastern Centre, we've got Richard Smith. Richard incidentally riding number six. Number but as they go past us for the first time, it's the man on the horn that keeps Strudwick leading. And Strudwick leads as they go round that first turn. But Jason Stollett is who gets to the front and Wadsworth back in about fourth place. Stuart Laird up there as well, but it's Jason Stott leading as they come round the top end for the first time. Stuart Laird there in second, Mark Wadsworth in third but as they bunch into the bottom turn, Jason Stott a super bottom turn and Stott it is still leading by about five metres. From Stuart Laird still in second, Mark Wadsworth in third, then Carl Wilkes, then Strudwick and Richard Smith runner up in the championship this year back in about seventh or eighth place. And still Richard Smith at the back of the pack. Well, Mark trying to get on terms with Stuart Laird as they come round that bottom turn, but Stuart's having none of it, but Mark will be up the inside on the top turn. So, Woody, it is, comes through in the second place, but he's still got Jason Stott out in front of him. Jason leads by 10 metres into the last lap. Well, 
Still the order, still the same, and it looks as though the Midlanders going to win this one. Jason Studdy here who had bad luck at the national championships when he fell. Jason Stott leads on the last turn, checkered flag at the ready, a win, four number 94, Jason Stott, second was third lane, fourth wheel, fifth good lane, and in sixth place, Wayne Drake. Second place goes to Steve Snyder. Third place goes to Steve Snyder. And there for number 94, Jason Stott. In second place, 344, Mark Wadsworth. In third place, 444, Stuart Laird. In fourth place, 248, Carl Wilkes. In fifth place was 124, Keith Strudwick. In sixth place, number 72, Wayne Drake. In seventh place, number 62, Steve Sarid. And in eighth place, number six, Richard Smith. And in ninth place, number 30, Mark Rowe. 138.34, 138.34. Those numbers again, 94, 344, 444, 248, 124, 72, 62, 6, and 30. But a win for the two middle and centre lads, first and second, Jason Scott and Mark Wadsworth. Race 9 goes as shown in the programme, the lineup. Is John Edwards, Lee Gaden, Tony Lance, Graham Thomas, Richie Knight, Steve Mander, Lee Street, Dean Camier, and Adrian Squirrel. So we've got the man who won the 250 championship in 92 and 93, and this one for Minsterly, number 314, Graham Thomas. Graham Thomas was passed off on the inside, into the bottom turn for the first time. But as they come out, it looks like Dean Camier leading the pack. Graham Thomas back there in second place. The rest of them getting strung out a little bit up the back straight and Graham Thomas making his way through in the second place. So, as they come off the bend, it is leading as we said, Dean Cameron. And Graham Thomas in third place. Behind Graham Thomas was Adrian Squirrel, but Dean Camier. Top six finish in the championship this year. It is who leads from street in second place. Graham Thomas back in third at the moment as they come off the top bend for the second time. The order still the same as Cameron. Thomas Adrian Squirrel on the KTM. He's Ethan Bender rider. No doubt about it. Dean Cameron really yeah, flying up that back straight on the antique. Honda, the man from Kent, leads by some 40, 50 metres as they come off the bend for second to last time, into the last lap. Thomas can do nothing about it, back in third and behind him, it's still Adrian Squirrel in fourth place. So, the right really on the last turn. Race nine. Looks so it's going to go to Dean Camion, nice and steady off the bend. Dean Camion, number 44 wins. In second place, very, very close. We'll leave that to the uh, last one to decide. No doubt about the fourth place man. Number 32, Adrian Squirrel. Behind Adrian Squirrel was uh, 116 Lee Gaden. For number 44, Dean Camion. In second place by Whisker, number 75, Lee Street. In third place, number 314, Graham Thomas. In fourth place, number 32, Adrian Squirrel. In fifth place, 116, Lee Gaden. In sixth place, 195, Steve Mander. In seventh place, 154, John Edwards. And in eighth place, 169, Tony Rance. The time, 138.57, 138.57. Those numbers again are 44, 75, 314, 32, 116, 195, 154, and 169. We're up for the 500 chairs, and Tony, the way we've split it, it's back to you for race 10, Tony. Thank you, Brian. Yes, that's uh, nicely explained. We know where we are now. And, of course, with the points competition, it's always necessary to have uh, one or two short intervals built in where the team can check on the results and uh, hopefully come up with the correct number of points first time around. It's not an easy job, and the ladies over here working away Really, they're responsible for the smooth running of the event, our, our lady lap scorers, and uh, we've got a lady timekeeper, we've got a lady uh, doing the points as well, so we're relying on the ladies very heavily today over here to make us do it right, and I'm sure they will. Here we go then, the 500 chairs breaking from the solo start line, Gary Lloyd up the inside, Paul Miller up to the 
The results then of race 11 as follows. In first place, number 7, Gary Law. In second place, number 110, Steve Dorr. In third place, number 341. Well, I think I've written that down a little incorrectly, don't you? I think that should be number 34. Number 34, of course, in third place, Steve Bishop. In fourth place, number 282, Mike Dowling. In fifth place, number 121, Alan Harmer. In sixth place, number 38, David Wright. In seventh place, number 374, Adrian Stevens. In eighth place, number 14, Kevin Buck. And in ninth place, number three, Chris Tripp. Uh, the winning time, 1 minute 33.05. 1 minute 33.05. Let's give those numbers again. 7, 110, 34, 282, 121, 38, 374, 14, 3, and 844. Today with the 500 solos, with the race 12, with Stuart Woodall, Phil Ashcroft, Tony Aitken, uh, Rob Fortune, Tommy Palmer. We don't expect to go. We're looking to see probably Gerald Short and in his place Colin Earl, who had a win first time out, Dean Garten, Alan Bagshaw, Gary O'Hare and Short Tacey. Well, we haven't spotted uh, we haven't spotted uh, Gerald Short, so whether we've still got Tommy Palmer with us. Uh, well, we don't think we've got Tommy Palmer, and we don't seem to have Gerald Short as a replacement either. Looking down through field glasses at race 12 on the start line. Ray Palmer tells me, yes, Tommy's had to dash off. So, uh, thank you for that, Ray. Here we go, then. Sean Tacey right there with it as well. And they still still would all to go around the bend, but I think it's Sean Tacey looking to change around there. Oh, and getting very, very wide and striking trouble, getting out of the loose. Tony Aitken, he looks like up in the second place. So Stuart Woodall out in front there, Tony Aitken in second spot, here comes Colin Earl charging round the outside trying to make up the ground. But it's still... Right there with us, but going awfully wide and losing the drive on the far side. Meanwhile there, Stuart Woodall pulling away from Tony Aitken, now the wall around the speedway man has gone over the ground to make up it. He's got a challenge for the lead in this one, but it's Stuart Woodall. Coming round towards us once again, number 89 it is, out in front. Colin Earl! Tony Aitken goes awfully wide, those Woodall back to second, Colin Earl leads. Well, 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 Tony Aitken in third place in quite a hectic bend there, but they're all safe and sound. It's Colin Earl then, with the advantage as the last lap flag goes out. Colin Earl out in front. Tony Aitken out in front. And it's Stuart Woodall now relegated to third place. Tony Aitken in second, the leader, Colin Earl. He's got quite a handsome advantage now as we come round towards the chequered flag. So victory then for Colin Earl. Tony Aitken in second place. Stuart Woodall in third. Rob Fortune in fourth. And in fifth place, Stuart And Dean Garton and Phil Ashcroft have the battle there for sixth place. In first place, number 172, Colin Earl. In second place, Number 10, Tony Aitken. In third place, number 89, Stuart Woodall. In fourth place, number 11, Rob Fortune. In fifth place, number 51, Sean Tacey. In sixth place, number 16, Dean Garden. In seventh place, number 8, Phil Ashcroft. In eighth place, number 56, Gary O'Hare. And in ninth place, the only other finisher, number 37, Alan Backshaw. And the winner's time, 1 minute 32.06. 1 minute. 32.06. So, race 13 coming up. And in this one we have Trevor Eden, Mark Seabright, Andy Sell, Mitchell Godden, Jason Handley, Peter Lloyd, Ian Dudley, Dave Perry, and Dave Mander. All about qualifying, of course, for the semis and then the final. And it's points right up to the end of the semis. And then it's a, a straight final with everyone who's qualified going for the money in the final itself. Well, I mentioned... Uh, 
Ray Palmer, Tommy's father, and Ray, of course, has given us uh, a reminder about the big events coming up uh, down Tunbridge Way, the Tunbridge and District Club running on the boarded circuit at Collier Street, the British Masters final on Sunday, September the 4th, and uh, also all the fun and the fireworks, plus some great racing on November the 6th when we have the international bonfire burnout. So a lot of good grass track coming our way, and Brian, I know, has a host of other events to bring to your attention a little later on. Meanwhile, then, we're looking for the start of race 13. Well, uh, now you hang on in there. Let's wait and see as they come off the bend. We look across to the far side there. Still the struggles on for the lead. Looking to see whether Peter Lloyd is, uh, is powering way through. Oh, had a little bit of a moment there. He's coming through. And looking to try and come through. That's Mark Seabright sitting in third. And, uh, well, number four, Peter Lloyd. He stalked the opposition in his first outing and took the lead. He's got a little bit of work to do here because right out in front, number 95 it is, is Jason Hamley. Oh, looking across to the far side, it's still number 95, it's still Jason Hadley on the new track from Kirk Stephen leading. Andy Sell from Bristol still in that second spot, Mark Seabright in third, Peter Lloyd. So back in fourth and still out of front. Oh, real middle and centre battle going on back there. Okay then, we look across to the far side. The leader, it's still number 95, it's still Jason Handley. He's going to come round and head for the chequered flag this time. Number 95 it is, Jason Handley who wins. Andy Stahl in second spot, Mark Seabright in third, Peter Lloyd in fourth. The places haven't changed, because behind him is the last draft in my corner. Number nine, Mitchell Gott, and then number four one nine, David Perry. as follows. In first place, number 95, Jason Handley. In second place, number 50, Andy Sell. In third place, number 167, Mark Seabright. In fourth place, number 4, Peter Lloyd. In fifth place, number 19, Trevor Eden. In sixth place, number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. In seventh place, number 250, Dave Mander. In eighth place, number 9, Mitchell Gordon. In ninth place, number 419, David Perry. And the winner's time, 1 minute 31.3. 1 minute 31.3. Those numbers read 95, 50, 167, 4, 19, 158, 250, 9, and 419. Time again, 1 minute 31.3. moment or so, Brian will be picking up race 14 as they assemble on the start line. Right, thank you, Tony. I thought we were just getting a message from the paddock, but uh, obviously not. On that race 13, nice to see Jason Hanley get some points. Of course, he failed to score first time out. And also Andy Sell getting second spot there, who also failed to score first time out after that tumble. I always think back to uh, 1982 when I see Andy Sell. Of course, he was out of the sport for a long time. But he did compete in the first Masters back in 82. And I know then he was a, a real super young guy. He's a little bit older now, a little bit more mature, but he's still a super rider. We're into race 14, and we've just got three outfits in this, and as they come off the bend for the first time, we've got number 15, Ivan Matthews, leading. And Ray Palmer, so it's uh, all Midland turn to battle this one, with uh, Ivan Matthews leading by a whisker from the Foreman brothers, who won first time out in second place, and Steve Smith and Keith Wall back in third. Well, Steve on the garden, you know, now, in Steve, I'm sure he's uh, not going to be uh, happy with the uh, spot for long, and I'd expect him to uh, challenge At the moment, having a super ride there in second place, but Ivan Matthews it is, leading with Peter Jones in the chair to go down the back straight. Steve Smith now makes his way up in the second spot. So, Steve Smith and Keith Wall in the second. The Foreman brothers are relegated back to third. So, Ivan Matthews and Keith Jones. Some 60 metres, 50, 60 metres now from Steve Smith and Keith Wall. 
and the Foreman brothers there in third. So, non-starters in this one were Pete Dyer, uh, Jerry Adams and Mark Edwards. Phil Prescott obviously uh, not going to participate in the meeting. Little bit of smoke coming as these down to the bed and uh, no Checkered flag and a win for either Matthews and Pete Jones, Steve Smith and Keith Wall in second place, and Lennon Ray Foreman in third place, Peter Jones. In second place, number two, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. And in third place was uh, 149, Len and Ray Foreman. The time for that one, 123.75, 123.75. Number 39, Shane Baker and Clint Martin, who uh, had a major problem in practice. They're out of race 15, so we're left with 184, John Hiscock and Tony Beamister. Uh, number 52, Terry Phillips and Chris Spears. Number 1, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. Number 90, Phil Pittman and Gary Lane. And number 5, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. Well, Mick Cave, first time out, had problems. If uh, my memory serves me right, he finished at the back of the field with some sort of mechanical problem. So, uh, let's see if uh, he fares better in this one. John Hiscock then, 184. Terry Phillips, 52. Craig Cheatham, number 1. Phil Pittman, number 90, and Mick Cave, number 5. So, we've got uh, Southern Crews. We've just seen an all-Midland Centre event. In this one, we've got John Hiscock uh, from Ringwood down there in the south. We've got Terry Phillips, also from the south, Bournemouth. Craig Cheatham, of course, Midland Centre man from Birmingham. Phil Pittman from Cornwall. And... Uh, Mick Cave from Sussex. So, Tony Beamister leading, and uh, they disappear into a little bit of dust on the top turn. It's Craig Cheatham there in second place. So, down the back straight, Hiscock leads by some 20 metres from Craig Cheatham in second place. And the battle going on for the minor places, but uh, John Hiscock and Tony Beamister. Pittman in fourth place and uh, Mick Cave coming out of that bottom turn a little bit wide but he gets away with it no problem. Mick Cave then holding third spot at the moment and obviously cured the misfire he had in his first slide. White, we look to our left. We see Craig Cheetah putting John Hitchcock on the pressure. And Mick Cave still there in third, Craig Cheatham still there in second. Well, uh, Mick Cave coming under pressure from Phil Pittman and Gary Lane for that third spot. But uh, it's still Mick Cave there in third as the checkered flag goes out. We're going to see a win for number one. Third place, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. And in fourth place, number 90, Phil Pittman and Gary Lane. And behind them, in fifth place, number 52, Terry Phillips and Chris Spear. Number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. In third place, number five, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. In fourth place, number 90, Phil Pittman and Gary Lane. And in fifth place, number 52, Terry Phillips and Chris Spears. And the time, 125.56, 125.56. Those numbers again were 184, number one, number five, 90 and 52. After two rides each, and uh, the sidecars, of course, at the moment, having their second ride as we look towards race 16. Non-starter in this one, number 46, Andy Norrish and Eddie Alvis. They had uh, problems at Ledbury in the mud a couple of weeks ago, and they've not been able to get the outfit uh, ready for today, which is a pity, because he's a, he's a good guy, is Andy. Um, disappeared through the paddock ropes at Ledbury, if my memory serves me right, but uh, he didn't come to any harm, but there again, you can excuse anybody, because it was just like a skating rink out there. So, race 16, we've got Russelling and Paul Uritz, number 6. Number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Number 98, Joe Mogg and Joe Smith. Rob Wilson Sr., or Rob Wilson Jr., I should say, number 25, and Colin Hill, and 51, is Roger Mees and Shane Lapham. So, super line-up in this. Who's it going to be? Jackson, Ian, or Mieser? One of those three, I would suggest. Mark Penn and Gary Jackson in trouble. 
So the Cheshire man in trouble and uh, Gary's still going right around the outside very, very slowly but in, to all intents and purposes he's out of the race. So we have up front Roger Meeser and Shane Lapham in second place Russell Ingham Paul Uris. That's the leading two. Meeser is some 20, 30 metres from Ing in second. In third place there is Joe Mogg. Behind Joe Mogg in fourth place was Rob Wilson and Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams really just crumbling around to try and get one or two points. Remember the points are not carried forward to the final, they're a way of getting to the final, so provided you qualify. We're into the last lap, Roger Mees are leading. Close the gap, Joe Mogg in third place. And uh, Rob Wilson is fourth, Gary going a little bit quicker now, but still going basically at touring speed back in fifth place. We look to our right, it looks like a win for Roger Mise. Coming off the bend with a 5, 10 meter lead, Roger Mise is in second. In third place, it is going to be just Joe Mogg there in third place. And uh, behind Joe Mogg was Rob Wilson, and behind Rob Wilson, was the unfortunate Gary Jackson. A win for number 51, Roger Meeser and Shane Lapham. In second place, number six, Rosling and Paul Uritz. In third place, number 98, Joe Mogg and Joe Smith. In fourth place, number 25, Rob Wilson Jr. and Colin Hill. And in fifth place, number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. The time, 123.32, a quick one, that's 123.32. Rod and Chris Winterburn, the Northern Brothers from Corn, number 148. Number 4, Dave Penfold and Paul Randall. Number 17, Dave Steer and Andrew Orchard. Number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargraves. And number 13, John Halsey and Jason Glennie. Well, John Halsey didn't have the best of luck first time out. He had some sort of uh, mechanical problem. You recall he trailed in at the end of the field. And uh, let's hope that John sorted himself out and uh, he's got the motor back to full speed because on his day, John Halsey is, of course, one of the best. So, Wilson, Winterburn, Penfold, Steer, Bennett and Halsey and uh, Rod Winterburn, one of the rare breed now, sidecar driver from the north of England. There's not many of them. The only other one that comes to mind at top level of note, of course, Alan Blewett, Alan John Blewett. But the winter... Have I missed some, Tony? Oh, the man from the Lincolnshire Poultry, of course, yes. And um, there's one or two others I've probably missed. Right. Reg Blackburn. Reg Blackburn, of course, I forget. Uh, he's back at the top level at the age of 51. Wonderful stuff, that. Right? Away we go, and uh, into the first turn. Well, who's it going to be? Tim Bennett at the back as they go into the first turn, but as they come off the bend, is it going to be Dave Steele? Who's it going to be? Close. In front, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. And uh, a little bit of dust now, but Rob Wilson leads as they go down the back straight. Yeah, Penfold's there in second place, just losing them in the dust day. Penfold and Paul Randall in second place. But he's still out in front. Dave Penfold there in second. Place the Winterburn brothers and uh, Chris on the back pointing to Rob to say something in front, but uh, they've got a little bit to do if they're going to get back on terms with the leading two. Those two are still Rob Wilson out in front, having his second good ride of the afternoon, still there in second place. Rob Kent, one of the many, many Penfold brothers that raced uh, sidecar, mainly the other way around, and problems on the top turn. And Rob Wilson goes out, so Rob Wilson's still going, but um, to all intents and purposes, he's out of the race, so the lead now taken over by Dave Penfold and Paul Randall, check and flag at the ready, and uh, Penfold is very close, but uh, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles get there. And I think John Halsey was fourth, but don't take my word for it. Tim Bennett was coming out very, very quickly, and we'll leave that to the lap scorers. But a problem there for Rob Wilson, maybe a puncture or something, I don't know. Of race 17, in first place, number four, Dave Penfold and Paul Randall. In second place, 148, Rob and Chris Winterburn. In third place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In fourth place, number 13, John Halsey and Jason Glennie. 
In fifth place, number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. And in sixth place, number 17, Dave Steer and Andrew Orchard. The time, 125.32. What is race 18 on your programme? In race 18, number 94, Jason Stott. Win first time out for Jason, Tony Rats, Richard Smith, Dean Camier, Stuart Lair, all the rest of them. Number two the Richard Smith's up there this time. He had a poor ride first time, but Richard Smith's battling away in about third place. At the moment, Stuart Laird's up there, and uh, it's Thomas leading as they go into the top turn, but Jason Stott putting Graham Thomas under pressure. Stuart Laird's up there, Richard Smith is up there, but it's Thomas from Stott. <laughs> And then Keith Strudwick, that's the leading bunch, and once again we're seeing some Super 250 racing. Well, Jason Stott really got the bit between his teeth today, he's already had one win, he goes to front, passes Graham Thomas, so it is Jason Stott out in front, in second place. <laughs> Camille, Keith Strudwick still there, but in about 6th or 7th place. Well, Graham Thomas really uh, not beaten yet, battling away, trying to get on terms with Jason Stott. We've got a yellow flag out on the top turn, but it's Jason Stott as they go into the last lap, but only now Camille comes through on the inside of Smith on the bottom turn to take up fourth in the race. Well, I think it's over now. I was going to say, it's not over yet, but uh, Jason really got super drive at the bottom turn. And as they come off the last turn, it's going to be a win once again for number 94, Jason Scott. Second, Graham Thomas, Stuart Laird, Dean Carrier, Richard Smith, and Glenn Richard Smith, Steve Syrett, and behind Steve Syrett was um, Keith Strudwick. So, an all-round sportsman. Another man who's an all-round sportsman is Mark Rowe, incidentally. The Penzance lad does a little bit of boxing when he's not racing motorcycles. Right, the uh, official result of race 18, a win for number 94, Jason Stott. In second place, number 314, Graham Thomas. In third place, number 444, Stuart Laird. In fourth place, number 44, Dean Camier. In fifth place, was number, I think we've got, to, yeah, it's number six, Richard Smith, it was riding six. In sixth place, number 62, Steve Sarris. In seventh place, number 72, Wayne Drake. In eighth place, number 116, Lee Gayden. And in ninth place, number 169, Tony Rance. The time, 137.16. 137.16. The man that impressed me of late, oh, on the Shropshire Man, the Shropshire Lads obviously go very quick. The man who's impressed me of late is number 30, Mark Rowe. The lad from Penzance on the Kawasaki, still in his early 20s, has, uh, really has been flying and uh, he went particularly well, I thought, at Ledbury a couple of weeks ago in the wet. So Mark Rowe, certainly a man to watch out for. Right, we get on the way. Well, if they go into the first corner, absolutely uh, not in between them. Lee Street, I think, was leading, but uh, that was when they went past us. There's a different, uh, different order now, or it is there. We've got Lee Street on the inside, but Carl Wilkes on the outside. And as they go into the top turn for the first time, the Telford man it is, leading by about 10 metres from the pack. Wilkes then leads. What's worth trying to come through in a second? Oh, Wilkes then lead. Mark Wadsworth comes through on the inside on the bottom turn to take up second spot. And once again we see Wilkes and Wadsworth. 1-2 and Mark Wadsworth very, very quick into the top turn but it's still Wilkes leading by some 5 or 6 metres. So Mark Wadsworth now in second place. <laughs> John Edward there, number 154, back in about six spot at the moment. Well, up the back straight, Mark Wadsworth going on the outside of Carl Wilkes, but these two know each other very, very well. In fact, they won the best pairs together a couple of years ago. Both rose to the Midlands Festival about uh, 12 months ago. Six weeks ago, to be exact. End of August, 1993, these two were part of the uh, Midland team that won the 250 event that day. So, side by side, check your flag. Who's going to get there? Mark Watson. 
Second place to Carl Wilkes. Third place to number 134, Godwin. Fourth place, well, could be anybody. Very, very close. Lee Street in a moment. Uh, fourth place, also up there with that bunch, was Adrian Squirrel. But 344, Mark Wadsworth. In second place, 248, Carl Wilkes. In third place, 124, Keith Strudwick. In fourth place, number 32, Adrian Squirrel. In fifth place, number 75, Lee Street. Sixth place, number 30, Mark Rowe. And in seventh place, number 154, John Edwards. The time, 137.06, 137.06. And the numbers again are 344, 248, 124, 32, 75, 30, and 154. And the other is not so good news, and that is that uh, number 16, Dean Gartner, has withdrawn. I don't know what his problems were, but uh, sorry to hear that, because Dean is in good form these days. But uh, we look forward to seeing him up at the Inter Centre, and uh, let's hope he has a safe journey home on that long trip back down to New Quay in Cornwall. Tony, can I just come in there before the 500 race? So it's a bit premature and handing over. I'd like to update on the 1,000 chairs. Mieser on 14, Foreman's on 11, Wilson Senior on 11, Matthews on 11, Penfold on 11, Cheatham on 10, Smith on 10, Winterburn on 10. Very, very close. Maybe Dean, Dean went, went uh, end over end in the first race. Maybe that has something to do with uh, withdrawing from the meeting, Tony. Yeah, in, uh, next weekend. They bounce back remarkably quickly, these guys. They really do. Right then, we're with the 500 sidecars once again. We suspect that uh, Paul Miller will not be taking part, but I have to say I can't see the star from where I'm sitting, so uh, we'll see if anybody's got field glasses on on the sidecar, on the solo start, of course. Well, he is at the start, so uh, maybe he's swapped an engine or maybe somebody's loaned him something anyway. He is, in fact, in action. So then he'll need some points. Kevin Lyde, he was who won the first item. Oh, all that uh, experience, the gate really well. He goes into that top bend in second spot, goes wide and drops back to third. Kevin Lyde goes up to second. And out in front is Paul Miller. So Paul Miller there has got right back out in front. Kevin Lyde handing him on the game. Oh, we can look across through the dust to the far side. It's uh, the team that have really made all the headlines this year, Paul Miller and Bob Reed on the 500 sidecars until it came to that national championship. And that's when Kevin Lyde managed to... Fourth place for Rob Williams. And if we look across to the far side, then certainly at this moment, Paul Miller pulling away from the opposition. That opposition headed by the British champions. They'll come round, they'll see the last lap flag and head into the last lap. And on the far side, Formula has time to look over his shoulder, look for the opposition. He can see it some 20 metres back. And he knows he's got a comfortable buffer as they head for the checkered flag. So then it's Paul Miller and Bob Reed who win. Kevin Lyons to go in second place. Gary Cunningham is in third. And then we've got Gary Lloyd and Gary Lloyd, number 22. We've got Dave Higgins. First place, outfit number 17, Paul Miller. Uh, with Bob Reed. In second place, number 7, Kevin Lyons and Degolroyd. In third place, number 49, Brian Canning and Colin Lewis. In fourth place, number 22, Gary Lloyd, Dave Higgin. In fifth place, number 14, Rob Williams and Edward Davies. And in sixth place, number 57, Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe. And the winner's time was 1 minute 37.26. Brian, tell us about your pre-75 once again. Minstrelly Club in action, so a super event coming up. Right, uh, uh, we're trying to publicise this and make it into a super do. It's the pre-75 classic. We'd hope to call it the British Championship, but the ACU uh, are not allowing it to have that title as yet. Maybe in a couple of years' time. It's on Sunday the 25th of September at Cedarwood Farm, Haberley, near Shrewsbury. That's the same venue as the National Championships were. Tony, I've got to go back to you. There we go, man.
Casey who led as he went past us, but as they go around the bend, he drops back a little bit. We look across and it looks like Mark Seabright's with the advantage now going down the back straight. And look at those three riders side by side going into that bottom bend. So then, Mark Seabright going superbly here and uh, really powering on the Seabright. Places. You look across to the far side. So it's Mark Seabright then, with the advantage. So Mark Seabright powering round the far bend, coming across to Mark on the BRM Jower from Ringwood. In the second place man going after the leader, Mark Seabright. Really coming under pressure now, although he's got an advantage down the straight when they get into the bends and the yeah, second place man's able to close up. This Mark Seabright out in front. <laughs> and what's the far side there? It's still Mark Seabright with the advantage, and now surely he's established sufficient advantage because the second place man can't seem to close up at all. Steve Gore. Looks as though he's second, settled for second. So, uh, this is Mark Seabright. Right. Redraw in second place. In third place, Sean Casey. In fourth place, number 14, Kevin Buck. In fifth place, number 8, Bill Ashcroft. In first place, number 167, Mark Seabright. In second place, number 110, Steve Dahl. In third place, number 51, Sean Tacey. In fourth place, number 14, Kevin Buck. In fifth place, number 8, Phil Ashcroft. In sixth place, number 56, Gary O'Hare. In seventh place, number 9, Mitchell Garden. In eighth place, number 312, Ian Dudley. And the winner's time, 1 minute 31.69. 1 minute 31.69.